the ISO 9, the ISO 19011, 2018 revision E, the guidelines for auditing management system. Table of contents. Scope, narrative, reference terms, and definitions, principles of auditing, management, managing an audit program. For five, five is managing and audit program. 5.1 general, 5.2 establishing audit program objectives, 5.3 determining and evaluating audit program risk and opportunities, 5.4 establish the audit program, 5.4.1 rules and responsibilities of the individual managing and audit program, competence of individual managing audit program, 5.4.3 establishing extent of audit program, 5.4.4 Point for determining audit program. 5.5 5 implementing audit program. 5.5.1 general. 5.5.2 de defining the objective scope and criteria of an individual audit. 5.5.3 selecting and determining audit method. 5.5.4 selecting audit team member. 5.5.5 assigning responsibility of an individual audit and the audit team leader. 5.5.6 Managing Audit Program Result 5.5.7 Managing and Maintaining Audit Program Records 5.6 Monitoring Audit Program 5.7 Reviewing and Improving Audit Program Chapter 6 Conducting an Audit 6.1 General 6.2 Initiating Audit 6.2.1 General 6.2.2 Establishing Contact with Audity Six point two point three determining feasibility of audit. Six point three preparing audit activities. Six point three point one performing review of documented information. Six point three point two audit planning. Six point three point three assigning work to audit team. Six point three point four preparing documented information for audit. Six point four conducting audit activities. Six point four point one general. Six point two point two assigning rules and responsibilities of guides and observers 6.4.3 conducting opening meeting 6.4.4 communicating during audit 6.4.5 audit information availability and access 6.4.6 reviewing documented information while conducting audit 6.4.7 collecting and verifying information 6.4.8 generating audit finding 6.4.9 determining audit conclusion 6.4.10 conducting closing meeting 6.5 preparing and distributing audit report 6.5.1 preparing audit report 6.5.2 distributing audit report 6.6 .6, completing audit 6.7 conducting audit follow-up chapter 7 competence and evaluations of auditors 7.1 general 7.2 determining auditors competence 7.2.1 general 7.2.2 Personal behavior, 7.2.3, knowledge and skills, 7.2.4, achieving auditor competence, 7.2.5, achieving audit team leader competence, 7.3, establishing auditor evaluation criteria, 7.4, selecting appropriate auditors evaluation method, 7.5, conducting auditors evaluation, 7.6, maintaining and improving auditors competence, Annex A, additional guidelines of auditors planning and conducting audit. Page 46, Bibliography. Introduction. Since the second edition of this document was published in 2011, a number of new management system standards has been published, many of which have a common structures, identical core requirements, and common terms and core definition. As a result, this is a need to consider a broader approach to management system auditing as well as providing guidelines that is more generic audit result can provide input to the analysis aspects of business planning and can contribute to the identification of improvement needs and activities. An audit can be conducted against the range of audit criteria separately or in combinations including but not limited to requirements defined in one or more management system standard, policies and requirements specified by relevant interested parties, Stationary and regulatory requirements, one of or more management system process identified by the organization or other parties, managing system plans relating to the provisions of specific output 
of the management system, example, quality plan, project plan. This document provides guidelines for all size of types of organization and audits of varying scope and skills, including those conducted by large audit team, typically a larger organizations and those by single auditors, whether in large or small organization. These guidelines should be adapted as appropriate to the scope complexity of skills and audit program. This document concentrates on internal audit first party and the audit conducted by the organization on their external provider and other external interest parties second party. This document can also be useful for external audit conducted for the purpose other than third party management system certification ISO IEC 17021-1 provides requirements for auditing management system for third party certification. These documents can provide useful additional guidelines. In table, table 1, different types of audit. First party, internal audit. Second party, external provider audit. Other external interested party audit. That is the second party audit. The third party audit is certification and or accreditation audit. Stationary, regulatory, and similar audit. To simplify the reliability of these documents, the singular forms of management system is preferred by, but the reader can adapt the implementations of guidelines to their own situation. This also applies to this use of individuals and individuals auditors and auditors. This document is extended to apply to the broad range of potential users, including auditors, organizations implementing management system and organization needing to conduct management system audit for contractual or regulatory reason. Users of these documents can However, apply these guidelines in developing their own audit-related requirements. The, guide, the guidance of this document can also be used for the purpose of self-declaration and can be useful to the organization involved in the auditor training or personal certification. The guidelines of this document is intended to be flexible as indicated at various points in the text. The use of this guide, guidance can differ depending on the size of level of maturity of an organization management system the nature and complexity of the organization to be audited as well as the objectives and the scope of the audit to be conducted should be also considered. The documents adapt the combined audit approach when two or more management system or different discipline are audited together where these systems are integrated into a single management system and principles and processes of auditing are the same as for the combined audit, sometimes known as an integrated audit, this document provides guidance in the management of an audit program on the planning and the conducting the management system audit as well as on the competence and evaluations of an auditor and an audit team. Guidelines for auditing management system is scope. Scope. These documents provide guidance on auditing management system, including the principles of auditing management and audit program and conducting management system audit, as well as a guidance on the evaluations of competence of individual involved in the third uh, in the audit process. These activities includes the individuals managing the audit program, auditors and audit team. It is applicable to all organization that needs to plan and conduct internal or external audit of management system or manage an audit program. The applications of these documents to other types of audit is possible provided that special considerations is given to the specific competence needed. Narrative references. These are no normative reference in these documents. Number three, terms and definition. For the purpose of these documents, the following terms and definition apply. ISO and IEC maintains terminology terminological database for use of hazard standardizations of the following address ISO online browsing platform available in http www.iso.org slash obp IEC electropedia available on http slash slash www.electropedia.org 3.1 audit audit is a systematic independent and documented process for obtaining objective evidence the evaluating its objectivity to determine the extent to which the audit criteria are fulfilled. Internal audit, sometimes called first party audit, are conducted by or on behalf of the organization itself. 
external audit includes this generally called second and third party audit second party audits are conducted by the parties having an interest in the organization such as customers or by other individual on their behalf third party audit are conducted by independent auditing organizations such as those providing certification registrations or conformity or governmental agency combine audit the 3.1 3.2 combine audit audit carried out together on the single audit on two or more management system when two or more discipline specific management system are integrated into the single management system this is known as integrated management system joint audit audit carried out on single audit by two or more auditing organization 3.4 audit program arrangement for set of one or more audit plan for a specific time frame and directed towards the specific purpose 3.5 audit scope extend and boundaries of an audit the audit scope generally includes uh, descriptions of physical and virtual location functions organization unit activities and processes as well as the time period covered a virtual location is where the organization perform works or provides a service service using an online environment allowing individuals respected by physical locations to execute process 3.6 audit plan descriptions of the activities and arrangement of an audit 3.7 audit criteria a set of requirements used as a reference against which objective evidence is compared if the audit criteria are legal including institutional regulatory requirements the words compliance or non-compliance are often used in the audit finding requirements may include policies procedure work interest instructions legal requirements contractual obligation and others the 3.8 objective evidence data supporting the existence or verity of something objective evidence can be obtained through observation measurement test or by other means objective evidence for the purpose of the audit generally consists of record statement of fact and other information which relevant to the audit criteria and verifiable 3.9 audit evidence record statement of fact and other information which are relevant for the audit criteria and verifiable audit finding result of the evaluations of the collected audit evidence against audit criteria audit finding indicates conformity or non-conformity audit finding can lead to the identification of risk opportunities for improvement or recording good practices in english if the audit criteria are selected from stationary requirements or regular regulatory requirements the audit finding is term compliance or non-compliance 3.11 audit conclusion audit conclusion outcomes of an audit after considerations of the audit objectives and all audit finding audit client the 3.12 is audit client organization or person requesting an audit in the case of internal audit the audit client can also be the audit or the individual as managing the audit program request for external audit can come from sources such as regulators contracting parties or potential or existing clients audit organization as a whole or parts of thereof being audited 3.14 audit team one or more person conducting an audit supported if needed by technical expert one auditor of the audit team is appointed as the audit team leader the audit team can include auditors in training auditor person who conduct audit technical expert 3.16 technical expert a person who provide specific knowledge or expertise to the audit team a specific knowledge or expertise relates to the organizations the activity process product service discipline to be audited or language or culture a technical expert to the audit team does not act as an auditor 3.17 observer observer is an individual who, who accompany 
accompanies the audit team but does not act as an auditor. Management system set of inter interrelated or interacting elements of an organization to establish policies and objectives and processes to achieve those objectives. Note 1. A management system can address a single discipline or several discipline, example quality management, financial management, or environmental management. The management system element establish the organization, structure, roles and responsibilities, planning, operations, policies, practices, roles, belief, organ objectives, and processes to achieve those objectives. The scope of managing system can include the whole of the organization, specific and identified functions of the organization, specific and identified sections of the organization, or, or one or more function across group organization. 3.19 risk. Risk is the effect of uncertainty. Not one. An effect of an effect is a deviation from the expected positive or negative impact. Uncertainty is the state, even partial or deficiency of information related to understanding or knowledge of an event, its consequence and likelihood. Risk is often characterized by reference to potential event as defined in ISO Guide 73-2009-3.5.1.3 and consequence as defined in ISO Guide 73.2009-3.6.1.3 or a combination of this. Risk is often expressed in terms of combinations of the consequence of an event including changes in circumstances and the associated likelihood as defined in ISO Guide 73.2009.3.6.1.1 of occurrence. Conformity, 3.20 conformity is a con fulfillment of a requirements. 3.21 non-conformity, non-fulfillments of the requirements. 3.22 competence, ability to apply knowledge and skills to achieve intended result. Requirements, need, need or expectation that is stated generally implied or obligatory. Generally implied means that it is a custom or common practice for the organizations and interested parties that the need of expectation under consideration is implied. A specific requirements is one that is stated, for example, in documented information. 3.24 process set. Process is a set of in, interrelated or interacting activities that use input to deliver an intended result. 3.25 performance. Performance is a measurable result. Performance can relate either to quantitative or qualitative finding. Performance can relate to the management of activities, product and services, and processes systems or organization. 3.26 Effectiveness Extend to which plan activities are realized and plan result achieved. Chapter 4 Principles of Auditing Auditing is characterized, characterized by reliance on a number of principles. These principles should help to make the audit an effective and reliable tools in support of management policies and controls by providing information on which an organization can act in order to improve its performance. Adhering to these principles is a prerequisite for providing audit conclusion that are relevant and sufficient and for enabling auditor working independently from one another to reach similar conclusions in similar circumstances. The guidance given in clause 5 to 7 is based on the seven principles outlined below. A. Integrity. The foundations of professionalism. Auditors and the individual managing an audit program should A. Perform their works ethically with honesty and responsibility. B. Only undertake audit activities if competent to do so. Number C. Perform their works in an impartial manner. Example, remain fair and unbiased in all their dealing. Be sensitive to any influence 
that may be exerted on their judgment while carrying out an audit. B. Fair presentations and the obligations to report truthfully and accurately. Fair presentation. Audit finding, audit conclusions, and audit reports should reflect truthfully and accurately the audit activities, significant obstacles encountered during the audit, and unresolved diverging opinion between the audit team and the audit team should be reported. The communication should be truthful, accurate, objective, timely, clear, and complete. C. Do we, do we professional care? Do we professional care? The applications of diligence and judgment in auditing. Auditors should exercise do we care in accordance with the importance of the task they perform and the confidence placed in them by the audit clients and other interested parties. An important factor in carrying out their works to do we professional care is having the ability to make reasoned judgment in all audit situation. D. Confidentiality. Confidentiality is a security of information. Auditors should exercise discretions in the use of protections of information requiring in the course of their duty. Audit information should not be used inappropriately for per personal gain by the auditor or the audit clients or in the manner detrimental to the legitimate interest of the audit. These concepts include the proper, proper handling of sensitive or confidential information. Independence. Independence, the basis of the impartiality of the audit and objectivity of the audit conclusion. Auditors should be independent of the activity being audited wherever practical and should in all cases act as a manner and is free from bias and conflict of interest. For internal audit, auditors should be independent from the function being audited if practicable. Auditors should Maintain objectivity throughout the audit process to ensure that the audit finding and conclusion are based only on the audit evidence. For a small organization, it may not be possible for internal auditor to be fully independent of the activity being audited, but every effort should be made to remove bias and encourage objectivity. Letter F, evidence. Evidence-based approach. Evidence-based approach, the, the rational method for reaching reliable and reproducible audit conclusion in a systematic audit process. Audit evidence should be verifiable. It should be general, be based on sample of the information available. Since an audit is conducted during the finite period of time and with finite resources, an appropriate use of sampling should be applied since this is closely related to the confidence that can be placed in the audit conclusion. Risk-based approach and audit approach that consider risk and opportunities. The risk-based approach should be substantially influence the planning, conducting, and reporting of the audit in order to ensure the audit are focused on matters that are significant from the audit clients and for achieving the audit program objectives. Managing an audit program, 5.1 general, an audit program should be established, which can include audit addressing one or more management system standard or other requirements conducted either separately or in combinations combined audit. The extent of an audit program should be based on the size of the natures of the audit, as well as on the natures of functionality complexity, the type of risk and opportunities and the level of maturity of the management system to be audited. The functionality of the management system can be even more complex when most of the important functions are outsourced and managed under the leadership of other organizations. Particular attentions need to be paid to where the most important decisions are made and what constitute the top management of the management system. In the case of the multiple location sites, example different countries, or where important functions are outsourced and managed under the leaderships of other organizations, particular attention should be paid to the design, planning, and validations of the audit program. In the case of a smaller or less complex organization, the audit program can be scaled appropriately.
in order to understand the context of the audit, the audit program should take into account the auditees. Organizational objectives, relevant external and internal issues, the needs and expectations of relevant interested parties, the information security and confidentiality requirements, the planning of internal audit program and in some cases programs for auditing external provider can be arranged to contribute to other objectives of the organization. In the individual management, managing the audit program should ensure the integrity of the audit is maintained and, there, and that there is not undue influence exerted over the audit. Audit priority should be given to allocating resource and method to matter in management system while with higher inherent risk and other and lower level performance. Competent individuals should be assigned to manage the audit program. The audit program should include information and identify resources to enable the audit to be conducted effectively and efficiently within the specific time frame. The information should include a objective for the audit program, be risk and opportunities associated with the program, and the actions to address them, let us see, scope, extent, boundaries, and location of each audit within the audit program, letter D, schedule, number, duration, frequency of the audit, letter A, audit type, which is internal or external, letter F, audit criteria, audit method to be employed, letter H, criteria for selecting audit team member, letter I, relevant documented information, some of this information may not be available until more detailed audit planning is complete. The implementations of the audit program should be monitored and measured on an ongoing basis to ensure its objectives has been achieved. The audit program should be reviewed in order to identify needs for changes and possible opportunities for improvement. Illustrates the process flow of the management of an audit program. Plan, do, check, act. 5.1 in plan area, 5.2 establishing audit program objectives, 5.3 determine the evaluating audit program risk and opportunity, 5.4 establishing audit program, 5.5 implementing audit program, 5.6 monitoring audit program, 5.7 reviewing and improve, improving audit program, 6.2 Initiating audit 6.3, preparing audit activities 6.4, conduct, conducting audit activities 6.5, preparing and distributing audit report 6.6, .6, completing audit 6.7, conducting audit follow up. Plan, do, check, act cycle. In figure one, this figure illustrates the applications of plan, do, check, act cycle in these documents. Clause sub clause numbering refers to relevant clause sub clause of this document. 5.2 Establishing audit program objectives. The audit client should ensure that the audit program objectives are established to direct the planning and conducting for audit and should ensure the audit program is implemented effectively. Audit program objectives should be consistent with the audit client's strategic directions and support management system policy and objectives. These objectives can be based on the considerations of the following A. Need and expectations of relevant interested party both inter external and internal. B. Characteristic and requirements for processes, conduct, services, and project and any changes to them. Letter C. Management system requirements. Letter D, need for evaluations of external provider. Letter A, audit level of performance and level of maturity of the management system as reflected in relevant performance indicators, example KPI. The occurrence of non-conformities or incident or compliance from interested parties. Letter F, identified risk and opportunities to the audit. Letter G, result of previous audit example of audit program objective can include the following 
identify opportunities for the improvement of the management system and its performance, evaluate the capability of the audity to determine its context, evaluate the capability of audity to determine its context, evaluate the capability of the audity to determine risk and opportunities and to identify the implement, implement effective action to address them, conform to all relevant requirements, example, stationary and regulatory requirements, compliance commitments, requirements for the certification to the management system standard, obtain and maintain confidence in the capability of an external provider, determine the continuing suitability, adequacy, and effectiveness of the audit management system, evaluate and compatibility of align of the management system objectives with the strategic directions of the organization. 5.3 Determining and Evaluating Audit Program Risk and Opportunities The risk and opportunities related to the context of the audit can be associated with the audit program and can be affect the achievement of its objectives. The individual managing the audit program should identify and present to the audit client the risk and opportunities considered when developing the audit program and resource requirements so that they can be addressed appropriately. There can be risk associated with the following. A. Planning. Example, failure to set relevant audit objectives and determining the extent, number of duration, locations, and schedules of the audit. B. Resources. Example, allowing sufficient insufficient time components and or training or developing the audit program or conducting an audit. C. Selections of the audit team, example, insufficient overall competence to conduct audit effectively. Communications, example, ineffective external internal communication process channel. Letter A. Implementation, example, ineffective coordinations of the audit within the audit program or not considering information security and confidentiality. Letter F. Control of documented information, example, ineffective determinations of the necessary documented information required by auditor and relevant interested parties failure to adequately protect audit records to demonstrate audit program effectiveness. Monitor and reviewing, improving the audit program, example, ineffective monitoring of audit program outcomes. Letter H. Availability and operations of audit and availability of evidence to be sampled. Opportunities for improving the audit program can include a allowing multiple audit to be conducted in the single visit, b minimizing time and distance traveling to site, c matching the level of competence of the audit team to the level of competence needed to achieve the audit objectives, D. Aligning audit date with the availability of audit key staff. 5.4. Establishing the audit program. 5.4.1. Rules and responsibility of the individual as managing the audit program. The individual as managing the audit program should A. Establish the extent of the audit program according to the relevant objective. C. 5.2. And any known constraint. B. Determining the external and internal issue and risk and opportunities that can affect the audit program and implement action to address them, integrating these actions in all relevant auditing activities as appropriate. C. Ensuring the selections of audit team and the overall competence of the auditing activities by the assigning rules and responsibilities and audit authorities and supporting leadership as appropriate. Establish all relevant process, including processes for the coordinations and scheduling of all units within the audit program to establish the audit objective scope and criteria of the audits, determining audits method and selecting the audit team, evaluating auditors, the establish of external and internal communication process as appropriate, the resolutions of dispute and handling of compliance, audit follow-up if applicable, reporting to the audit clients and relevant interested parties as appropriate. Letter E, determine and ensure provisions of all necessary resources. Letter F, ensure the 
appropriate document information is prepared and maintained, including audit program, record, letter G, monitor, review, and improve the audit program, letter H, communicate the audit program to the audit client and as appropriate relevant interested parties. The individuals managing the audit program should request its approval by the, by the audit client. 5.4.2 Competence of individuals managing audit program. The individuals managing the audit program should have necessary competence to manage the program and its associated risk and opportunities, an external and internal issue effectively and efficiently, including knowledge of a audit principles, method and processes. Management system is standard other relevant standard and reference guidance documents, information regarding the audit and its context, external, internal issue, relevant interesting parties and other needs and expectation, business activities, products, services, and processes of the audit. Ap the applicable stationary and regulatory requirements and other requirements relevant to the business activities of the activity. Letter D applicable. As appropriate activities and audit. As appropriate knowledge of risk management process, project and process management and information and communicating technology ICT may be considered. The, the individual management and audit program should engage in appropriate continual development activities to maintain the necessary competence to manage. The audit program 5.4.3 establishing extent of audit program the individuals managing the audit program should determine the extent of the audit program they can vary depending on the information provided by the audit regarding its context in certain cases depending on the audit's structures or its activity the audit program might only consist of a single audit example a small project or organization other factors impacting the extent of an audit program can include the following a the objective scope and durations of each audit and the number of the audit to be conducted reporting method and if applicable audit follow the, ma and the managing system is standard or other applicable criteria letter c the number importance complexity similarity and locations of the activities to be audited letter d those factors influencing the effectiveness of the management system letter a applicable audit criteria such as plan arrangement of the relevant management system standard decisionary and regulatory requirements and other requirements to which the organization is committed result of previous internal or external audit and management review if appropriate letter g result of a previous audit program review letter h language cultural and social issues Letter I, the concern of interested parties such as customer compliance, non-compliance with stationary and regulatory requirements and other requirements to which the organization is committed or supply chain issue. J, significant changes to the auditee's context or its operations and related risk and opportunities. K, availability of information and communication technologies to support audit activities, in particular, the use of remote audit methods. See Article 16. L, the occurrence of internal and external events, such as non-conformities of products or service, information security leaks, healthy and safety incidents, criminal acts of environmental incidents, and business risks and opportunities, including actions to address them. Five point four point four determining audit program resources. When determining resources for the audit audit program, the individual Managing the audit program should consider A. The financial and time resources necessary to develop, implement, 
manage and improve audit activities. B. Audit methods. C. Article 1. C. The individual and overall availability of auditors and technical experts having competence appropriate to the particular audit program objectives. D. The extent of the audit program. C. 5.4.3. And audit program risks and opportunities. C. 5.3. E. Travel time and cost accommodation and other auditing needs. F. The, inf the impact of different time zones. G. The availability of information and communication technologies. Example, technical resources required to set up a remote audit using technologies that support remote collaboration. H. The ability of any tools, technology, and equipment required. I. The availability of necessary documented information as determined during the establishment establishment of the audit program c article 5 j requirements related to the facility including any security clearances and equipment example background checks personal protective equipment ability to wear clean room tire 5.5 implementing audit program 5.5.1 general once the audit program has been established C 5.4.3 and related resources have been determined C 5.4.4 it is necessary to implement the operational planning and coordination of all activities within the program the individual managing the audit program should a communicate the relevant parts of the audit program including the risk and opportunities involved to relevant interested parties and inform them periodically of its process using established external and internal communication channels. B. Define objectives, scope, and criteria for each individual audit. C. Select audit methods. C. Article 1. D. Coordinate and schedule audits and other activities relevant to the audit program. E. Ensure the audit teams have the necessary competence. C. 5.5.4 F. Provide necessary and individual and overall resources to the audit teams. G. Ensure the conduct of audits in accordance with the audit program, managing all operational risks, opportunities, and issues and unexpected events as they arise during the deployment of the program. H. Ensure relevant documented information regarding the auditing activities is properly managed and maintained. I. Define and implement the operational controls necessary for audit program monitoring. J. Review the audit program in order to identify opportunity, opportunities for its improvement. 5.5.2 Defining the Objectives, Scope, and Criteria for an Individual Audit Each individual audit should be based on defined audit objectives, scope, and criteria. This should be consistent with the overall audit program objectives. The audit objectives define what it is to be accomplished by the individual audit and may include the following. A. Determination of the extent of conformity of the management system to be audited or parts of it with audit criteria. B. Evaluation of the capability of the management system to assist the organization in meeting relevant statutory and regulatory requirements and other requirements to which the organization is committed. C. Evaluations of the effectiveness of the management system in meeting its intended results. D. Identifications opportunities for potential improvement of the management system. E. Evaluation of the suitability and adequacy of the management system with respect to the context and strategic direction of the audit. F. Evaluation of the capability of the management system to establish and achieve objectives and effectively address risk and opportunities in changing context, including the implementation of the related actions.
The audit, the audit scope should be consistent with the audit program and audit objectives. It includes such factors as locations, functions, activities, and process to be audited as well as the time period covered by the audit. The audit criteria are used as reference against which conformity is determined. This may include one or more of the following applicable policies, processes, procedures, performance criteria including objectives, statutory and regulatory requirements, management systems and requirements, information regarding the context and the recent opportunities as determined by the auditee, including relevant external, internal, interested parties requirements, sectors, sector code of conduct of other or other planned arrangements in the event of any changes to the audit objectives, scope, or criteria, the audit program should be modified if necessary and communicated to interested parties for approval if appropriate. When more, one, when more than one discipline is being audited at the same time, it is important that the audit objectives, scope, and criteria are consistent with the relevant audit programs for each discipline. Some disciplines can have a scope that reflects the whole organization and others can have a scope that reflects a subset of the whole organization. <clears throat> ISO 19011 of 2018, 5.5.3, selecting and determining added methods. The individual managing the audit program should select and determine the methods for the effectively and efficiently conducting an audit depending on the defined audit objectives, scope, and criteria. Audits can be performed on site remotely or as combination. The other use of methods should be suitably balanced based on among others considerations of associated risks and opportunities. Where two or more auditing organizations conducting a joint audit of the same oddity, the individuals managing the different auditing audit programs should agree on the audit methods and consider implications for resourcing and planning the audit. If an oddity operates two or more management systems of different dis disciplines, combined audits may be included in the audit program. 5.5.4, selecting audit team members. The individuals managing the audit program should appoint the member of the audit team, including the team leader and any technical experts needed for the specific audit. An audit team should be selected, taking into account the competence needed to achieve the objectives of the individual. Audit within the defined scope. If there is only one auditor, the auditor should perform all applicable duties of an audit team leader. Note, Clause 7 contains guidance on the determining the competence required for the audit members, team, audit team members and describes the process for evaluating auditors. To assure the overall competence of the audit team, the following steps should be performed. Identifications of the competence needed to achieve the objectives of the audit. Selection of the audit team members so that the necessary competence is present in the audit team. In deciding the size and composition of the audit team for the specific audit, consideration should be given to the following. A. The overall competence of the audit team needed to achieve audit objectives taking into account audit scope and criteria. B, complexity of the audit. C, whether the audit is combined or joint audit. D, the selected audit methods. E, ensuring objectivity and impartiality to avoid any conflict of interest of the audit process. The ability of the audit team members to work and interact effectively with the representatives of the audit team and relevant interested parties. G, the relevant external internal issues such as language of the audit and the auditee's social and cultural characteristics. These issues may be addressed either by the auditor's own skills 
or through the support of technical experts also considering the need for interpreters. Age, type, and complexity of the process to be audited. Where appropriate, the individuals managing the audit program should conceal, consult the team leader on the composition of the audit team. If the necessary competence is not covered by the auditors in the audit team, technical experts with additional competence should be made available to the support team. Auditors in training may be included in the audit team but should participate under the direction and guidance of an auditor. Changes to the composition of the audit team may be necessary during the audit. Example, if a conflict of the interest or competence issues arises, if such a situation arises, it should be resolved with the appropriate parties. Example, audit team leader, the individual managing the audit program, audit client or auditee before any change are made. Assigning responsibility for an individual audit to the audit team leader. 5.5.5. The individual managing the audit program should assign the responsibility for the conduct of the individual audit to an audit team leader. The assignment should be made in sufficient time before the scheduled date of the audit. In order to ensure the effective planning of the audit, to ensure effective conduct of the individual audits, the following information should be provided to the audit team leader. A. Audit objectives. B. Audit criteria and any, any relevant documented information. C. Audit scope, including identification of the organization and its functions and processes to be audited. D. Audit processes and associated method. E. Composition of the audit team. F. Contact details of the auditee, the locations, time frame, and duration of the audit activities to be conducted. G. Resources necessary to conduct the audit. H. Information needed for evaluating and addressing identified risks and opportunities to the achievement of the audit objectives. In I. Information which support, supports the audit team leader in their interactions with the auditee for the effectiveness of the audit program. The assignment information should also cover the following as appropriate. Working and reporting language of the audit where this is different from the language of the auditor or the auditee or both. Audit reporting output as required and to whom it to be distri distributed. Matters related to confidentiality and information security as required by the audit program. Any health, safety, and environmental arrangements for the auditors. Requirements for travel or access to remote sites, any security and authorization requirements, any actions to be reviewed, example, follow-up actions from a previous audit, coordinations with other audit activities, example, when different teams are auditing similar or related process at different locations or in the case of joint audit. Coordination with other audit activities, example, when different teams are editing similar or related process at different locations or in the case of joint audit. Where a joint audit is conducted, it is important to reach agreement among the organizations conducting the audits before the audit commences on the specific responsibilities of each party, particularly with regard to the authority of the team leader appointed to, for the audit. 5.5.6 Managing Audit Program Results The individual managing the audit program should ensure the following activities are performed. A. Evaluation of the achievement of the objectives for each audit with the audit program. B. Review and approval of audit reports regarding the fulfillment of the audit scope and objectives. C. Review of the effectiveness of actions taken to address audit findings. D. Distribution of audit reports to the relevant interested parties. E. Determinations of the necessity for any follow-up audit. The individual managing the audit program should consider where appropriate. 
communicating audit results and best practices to other areas of the organizations and the implications for the other processes. 5.5.7, managing and maintaining audit program records. The individual managing the audit program should ensure that the audit records are generated, managed, and maintained to the demonstrate the implementations of the audit program. Processes should be established to ensure that any information security and confidentiality needs associated with the audit records are addressed. Records can include the following records related to the audit program, such as schedule of audits, audit program objectives and extent, those addressing and audit program risks and opportunities and relevant external and internal issues, reviews of the audit program effectiveness, B, records related to each audit such as audit plans and audit reports, objective audit evidence and findings, non-conformity reports, corrections and corrective action reports, audit follow-up and reports. Rec C. Records related to the audit team governance topics such as competence and performance evaluations of the audit team members, criteria for the selections of audit teams and team members, and formation of audit teams, maintenance and improvement of competence. The form and level of detail of records should demonstrate that the objectives of the audit program have been achieved. 5.6. Monitoring audit program. The individuals managing the audit program should ensure the evaluations of whether schedules are being met and audit program objectives are being achieved. B. The performance of the audit team members, including the audit team, mem team leader and the technical experts. C. The ability of the audit teams to implement the audit plan. D. Feedback from audit clients, auditees, auditors, technical experts, and other relevant parties. E. Sufficiency and adequacy of documented information in the whole audit process. Some factors can indicate the need to modify the audit program. These can include changes to A. Audit findings. Demonstrated level of auditees management, system effectiveness and maturity. Effectiveness of the audit program. Audit scope or audit program scope, the auditees management system, standard and the other requirements to which the organization is committed, external providers, identified conflicts of interest, the audit client's requirements, 5.7, reviewing improving audit program. The individuals managing the audit program and the audit client should review the audit program to assess whether its objectives have been achieved. Lessons learned from the audit program review should be used as inputs for the improvement of the program. The individuals managing the audit program should ensure the following. Review of the overall implementations of the audit program. The identifications of areas and opportunities for improvement. Application of changes to the audit program if necessary. Review of the continual professional development of auditors in accordance with 7.6. Reporting of the results of the audit program and review with the cl audit client and relevant interested parties as appropriate. 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 The audit program review should consider the following. A. Results and trends from audit program monitoring. B. Conformity with audit program, processes, and relevant documented information. C. Evolving needs and expectations of relevant interested parties. D. Audit program records. E. Alternative of new auditing methods. F. Alternative or new methods to evaluate auditors. G. Effectiveness of the actions to address the risks and opportunities and internal external issues associated with audit program. H. Confidentiality and information security issues related to the audit program. C. Conducting an audit. Six. Conducting an audit. Six point one general. This clause contains guidance on preparing and conducting a specific audit. As part of an audit program, Figure 2 provides an overview of the activities performed in typical audit, the extent to which the provision 
of this clause are applicable depends on the activity objectives and scope of the specific audit. 6.2. Initiating audit. 6.2.1. General. The responsibility for conducting the audit should remain with the assigned audit team leader. C. 5.5.5. Until the audit is completed. C. 6.6. To initiate an audit, the steps in Figure 1 should be considered, however, the, co the sequence can differ depending on the oddity, processes, and specific circumstances of the audit. 6.2.2 Establishing contact with oddity The audit team leader should ensure the contact is made with the oddity to A. Confirm communication channels with the oddity's representatives B. Confirm the authority co to conduct the audit. C. Provide relevant information on the audit objectives, scope, criteria, methods, and audit team composition, including any technical experts. D. Request access to relevant information for planning purposes, including information on the risks and opportunities the organization has identified and how they are addressed. E. Determine applicable statutory and regulatory requirements and other requirements relevant to the activities, process, products, and services of the audit. F. Confirm the agreement with the audit regarding the extent of the disclosure and the treatment of confidential information. F. Confirm the agreement with the audit team regarding the extent of the closure and the treatment of confidential information. G. Make arrangements for the audit including the schedule. H. Deter determine any location-specific arrangements for access, healthy and safety, security, confidentiality, or other. I. Agree on the attendance of observer and the need for guides or in interpreters for the audit team. J. Determine any areas of interest. Concerns are risks for, to the auditee in relation to the specific audit. K. Resolve issues regarding composition of the audit team with the auditee or audit client. 6.2.3 Determining feasibility of audit. The feasibility of the audit should be determined to provide reasonable confidence that the audit objectives can be achieved. The determination of feasibility should take into consideration factors such as availability of the following. A. Sufficient and appropriate information for planning and conducting the audit. B. Adequate cooperations from the auditee. C. Adequate time and resources for conducting the audit. Note, resources includes access to adequate and appropriate information and communication technology. Where the audit is not feasible, an alternative should be proposed to the audit client in agreement with the auditee. 6.3 Preparing audit activities. 6.3.1. Performing review of documented information. The relevant management system documented information of the auditee should be reviewed in order to gather information to understand the auditee's operations to prepare audit activities and applicable audit work documents. Example and process functions. Establish an overview of the extent of the documented information to determine possible conformity to the audit criteria and detect possible areas of concern, such as deficiency, omissions, or conflicts. The documented information should include but not limited to management system documents and records, as well as previous audit reports. The review should take into account the context of the auditor's organizations, including its size, initial complexity, and its related risks and opportunities, it should also take into actions the audit scope, criteria, and objectives. Note, guidance on how to verify information is provided in 8.5. 6.3.2, audit planning. 6.3.2.1, risk-based approach to planning. The audit team leader should adopt a risk-based approach to planning the audit based on the information in the audit program and the documented information provided by the auditee. Audit planning should consider the risk of the audit activities and the audit process and provide the basis for the agreement among the audit client. Audit team and the auditees regarding the conduct of the audit planning should facilitate an efficient scheduling and coordination of the audit activities in order to achieve the 
objectives effectively. The amount of data provided in the audit plan should reflect the scope and complexity of the audit, as well as the risk for not, of not achieving the audit objectives. In planning the audit, the audit team leader should consider the following. A. The composition of the audit team is our overall competence. B. The appropriate sampling techniques. C. Article 6. C. Opportunities to improve the effectiveness and efficiency of the audit activities. D. The risk to achieving the audit objectives created by ineffective audit planning. E. The risk to the audit created by the performing the audit. Risk to the audit can result from the presence of the audit team members adversely influencing the auditee's arrangements for health and safety environment and quality and its products, services, personnel, or infrastructure. Example, contaminations in clean room facilities for combined audits particular attention should be given to the interactions between operational processes and any competing objectives and priorities of the different management system. 6.3.2.2 Audit planning details. The scale and content of the audit planning can differ, for example, between initial and subsequent audits, as well as between internal and external audits. Audit planning should be sufficiently flexible to permit changes which can become necessary as the audit activities process progress. Audit planning should address or reference the following. A. The audit objectives. B. The audit scope, including identification of the organization and its functions as well as processes to be audited. C, the audit criteria and any reference documented information. D, the local physical and virtual dates, expected time and duration of the audit activities to be conducted, including meetings with the auditees and management. E, the need for the audit team to familiarize themselves with auditees, facilities, and process. Example, by conducting a tour of physical locations or reviewing information and communication technology. F. The audit methods to be used, including the extent to which audit sampling is needed to obtain sufficient audit evidence. G. The roles and responsibility of the audit team members as well as the guidance or observance of interpreters. H. The allocation of appropriate resources based upon the considerations of the risks and opportunities related to the activities that are to be audited. Audit planning should take into account as appropriate. Identification of the auditee's representative for the audit. The working and reporting language of the audit where this is different from the language of the auditor or the auditee or both. The audit report topics. Logistics and communications arrangements including specific arrangements for the locations to be audited. Any specific actions to be taken to the address list to achieve the deep objectives and opportunities arising. Matters related to confidentiality and information security. Any follow-up actions from the previous audit or other resources, example, lessons learned, project reviews, any follow-up activities to the planned audit, coordination with other audit activities in case of a joint audit. Audit plans should be presented to the auditee. Any issues with the audit plan should be resolved between the audit team leader, the auditee, and if necessary, the individuals managing the audit program. 6.3.3 Assigning work to audit team. The audit team leader in consultation with the audit team should assign to each team member responsibility for auditing specific process and activities functions or locations and as appropriate authority for decision making. Such assi assignments should take into account the impartiality and ob objectivity and competence of auditors and the effective use of resources as well as different roles and responsibilities of auditors, auditors in training and technical experts. Audit team meetings should be held as appropriate by the audit team leader in order to al allocate work assignments and decide possible changes. Changes to the work assignments can be made as the audit progress in order to ensure the achievement 
of the audit objectives. 6.3.4 Preparing Documented Informations for Audit The audit team members should collect and review the information relevant to their audit assignments and prepare documented information for the audit. Using any appropriate media, the documented information for the audit can include, but it's not limited to, A. Physical or digital checklists, B. Audit sampling details, C. Audiovisual information. The use of this media should not restrict the extent of audit activities, which, which can change as a result of information collected during the audit. Note, guidance on preparing audit work documents is given in A.13. Documented information is prepared for and resulting from the audit should be retained at least until audit completions are as specified in the audit program. Retention of documented information after audit completion is described in 6.6 .6, documented information created during the audit process involving confidential or prop proprietary information should be suitably safeguarded at all times by the audit team members. Six point four conducting audit activities six point four point one general audit activities are normally conducted in defined sequence as indicated in figure one. This sequence may be varied to suit the circumstances of speci specific audits. 6.4.2 Assigning roles and responsibilities of guides and observers. Guides and observers may accompany the audit team with approvals from the audit team leader, audit client, and or auditee if required. This should not influence or interfere with the conduct of the audit. If this is cannot be assured, the audit team leader should have the right to deny observers from being present during certain audit activities. For observers, any arrangements for access, health and safety, environmental security, and confidentiality should be managed between the audit client and the auditee. Guides and appointed by the auditee should assist the audit team and act of the request of the audit team leader or the auditor to which they have been assigned. Their responsibilities should include the following. A. Assisting the auditors in identifying individuals to participate in interviews and confirming timings and locations. B. Arranging access to specific locations of the auditee. C. Ensuring the rules concerning location, specific arrangements for access, health and safety, environmental security, and confidentiality and other issues are known as respected by the audit team members and observers and any risks are addressed. D. Witnessing the audit on behalf of the auditee when appropriate. E. Providing clarification or assisting in collecting information when needed. 6.4.3 Conducting Opening Meeting The purpose of the opening meeting is to confirm the agreement of all participants ex couple, auditee, audit team, to the audit plan, introduce the audit team and their roles, C. Ensure that all planned audit activities can be performed. An opening meeting should be held with the auditee's management and, where appropriate, those responsible for the functions or process to be audited during the meeting, an opportunity to ask questions should be provided. The degree of detail should be consistent with the famili familiarity of the auditee with the audit process. In many instances, example of aud internal audits in small organization, the opening meeting may simply consist of the communicating that an audit is being conducted and explaining the nature of the audit. For other audit situations, the meeting may be formal and records of the attendance should be retained. The meeting should be chaired by the audit team leader. Introduction of the following should be considered as appropriate. Other participants including observers and guide, guides and interpreters and an outline of their roles. 
The audit methods to manage risk to, to the organization, which may result from the presence of the audit team members. Confirmation of the following items should be considered as appropriate. The audit objective scope and criteria. The audit plan and other relevant arrangements with the auditees, such as date, time, for the closing meeting, any interim meetings between the audit team and the auditees management, and any changes needed. Formal communication channels between the audit team and the auditee, the longest to be used during the audit, the auditee being kept in form of audit progress during the audit, the availability of the resources and facilities needed by the audit team, matters related to confidentiality and information security. Relevant access, healthy, health and safety, security, emergency, and other arrangements for the audit team. Activities on site that can impact the conduct of the audit. The presentation of information of the following items should be considered as appropriate. The method of reporting audit findings, including criteria for grading, if any, conditions under which the audit may be terminated. How to deal with possible findings during the audit. Any system for feedback from the RDT on the findings or conclusions of the audit, including complaints or appeals. 6.4.4, communicating during audit. During the audit, it may be necessary to make formal arrangements for communication within the audit <clears throat> team, as well as with the RDT, the audit client, and potentially with external interested parties, example, regulators, especially where statutory and regulatory requirements require mandatory reporting of non-conformities. The audit team should be con conferred periodically to exchange information, as assess audit progress, and reassign work between the audit team members as needed. During the audit, the audit team leader should periodically communicate the progress, any significant findings, and any concerns to the audit team and audit client. As appropriate, evidence collected during the audit that suggests immediate and significant risk should be reported without delay to the auditee and as appropriate to the audit client. <clears throat> Any concerns about an issue outside the audit scope should be noted and reported to the audit team leader for possible communication to the audit client and auditee, where the available audit evidence indicates that the audit objectives are untainable. The audit team leader should report the reasons to the audit client to the auditee to determine appropriate action. Such action may include the changes to audit, audit planning. The audit objectives or audit scope or termination of the audit. Any need for changes to the audit plan which may become apparent as auditing activities progress should be reviewed and accepted as appropriate by both the individual managing the audit program and the audit client and presented to the audit. 6.4.5 Audit Information Availability and Access The audit methods chosen for an audit depend on the defined and audit objective scope and criteria as well as duration and location. The location is where the information needed for the specific audit activity is available to the audit team. This may include physical and virtual locations. Where, when, and how to access audit information is crucial to the audit. This is independent of where the information is created, used, and or stored based on these issues. The audit met methods need to be determined. See Table 8.1. The audit can use mixture of methods. Also, audit circumstances may mean that the methods needs to be changed during the audit. 6.4.6, .6, reviewing documented information while conducting audit. The audit is relevant documented information should be reviewed to determine the conformity of the system as far as documented with audit criteria. Gather information to support the audit activities. Note, guidance on how to verify information is provided in Article 0.5. The review may be combined with the other audit activities and may continue throughout the audit, providing this is not detrimental to the effectiveness of the conduct of the audit. If adequate documented information cannot be for provided within the time frame given in the audit plan, the audit team leader should inform both the individuals managing the audit program and the audit team, depending on the audit ob objectives and scope. A decision should be made as whether the audit should be continued 
or suspended until documented information concerns are resolved. 6.4.7 Collecting and verifying information during the audit information relevant to the audit objective scope and criteria include information related relating to interfaces between functions activities and process should, should be collected by means of appropriate sampling and should be verified as far as practicable note 1 for verified information see article 5 note 2 guidance on sampling is given in article 6 The ISO 9, the ISO 19011, 2018 revision E, the guidelines for auditing management system. Table of contents.